Hi everybody. Yeah, today this video is really a recording of my interview with BBC on the Global Finance Program. I request from people interested in this to hear this uh, interview that was recorded in 1997 by BBC and it was actually supposed to be transmitted worldwide. Time now for Global Business, presented by Roger White. 2,000 years ago, in the middle of the era of warring states, a Chinese warrior philosopher called Sun Tzu wrote a book called The Art of War. Not so much a book, actually, as a series of strips of bamboo containing his thoughts on military strategy. Sun Tzu, or the master, was the commander-in-chief of the Kingdom of Wu, and he chose to spend the final years of his highly successful life not fighting, but sitting in a cave high up in the mountains of Wu, thinking and writing. Now, what's all this got to do with business, you may very well be thinking. Well, a little patience, please, and as Sun Tzu himself said, be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Sun Tzu said, the general who is skilled in defense hides in the most secret recesses of the earth. He who is skilled in attack flashes forth from the topmost heights of heaven. Thus, on the one hand, we have ability to protect ourselves, on the other, a victory that is complete. To see victory only when it is within the can of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. Neither is it the acme of excellence if you fight and conquer and the whole empire says, well done. To lift an autumn hair is no sign of great strength. To see the sun and the moon is no sign of sharp sight. To hear the noise of thunder is no sign of a quick ear. What the Asians called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. And those were three sayings from The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Now, coming rather swiftly to the point, the sayings of Sun Tzu seem on the face of it to be of assistance only to other military men facing similar problems of warring states. You could perhaps understand that his sayings might be of some interest in, say, the Balkans or the Middle East. But no, some people believe his work is one of the mysterious secrets behind the success of East Asian economies over the last few decades a hidden reason behind the rise and rise of the little tigers. One of the main proponents of this little-known theory is Singapore's Dr. Fu Chek Tech. Dr. Fu has published several books on how Sun Tzu has become essential reading for many Asian chief executives. In his latest book, Dr. Fu attempts to expand on Sun Tzu's original strategies, and he's even advising business graduates in Singapore on how to use them. I spoke to both Dr. Fu and to the Singaporean businessman Kelvin Pun, and I began by asking Dr. Fu, does he really want us to believe a Chinese warrior back in the era of the warring states can tell the leaders of business in the era of globalization on the verge of the 21st century anything remotely useful? And can we really draw parallels between war and business? 
Now, I used to say that uh, when companies don't do well, what do they do? They, they report in accounting figures in red. So it's the same in war when you're short, you know, your, your blood flows <laughs> and you're red. Sun Tzu has written one whole chapter, 13, on spies, the use of spies. And for, for example, too, uh, Sun Tzu has spoken about terrain, that uh, and a terrain, of course, is the environment, you know. So I, I, there's a very close correspondence, and Sun Tzu spoke about the qualities of leadership required in generals. And you have this, uh, you know, a lot of work done on, on leadership in the West, on transformational leadership, for example. So Sun Tzu did the first classic transformation of using concubines of the emperor and converted them into soldiers ready for war. And so I, I, there is a very close correspondence, but it must be read metaphorically, right? So it is important that, that the metaphors are there, the general, the general manager, the soldiers, the workers, in, in, in Sun Tzu's mind then, Dr. Fu, what was the ideal strategy, which you would say again would be apply, applicable to business in, in the modern world, what is the ideal strategy of, of winning, whether you're winning a war or winning a market share? Well, Sun Tzu has never prescribed uh, one strategy. Well, what Sun Tzu really said is you, has, you have to be like water. The strategy, you should be highly adaptable. You have to be flexible. You have to see the situation. You have... The strategy must feed the terrain. So when he says, for example, that it's best if you can possibly win, win the battle uh, without the fighting, and then if you can't do that, it's better to attack the army or the alliances of your enemies rather than attack the city itself. I mean, what does, it, what does he mean by that? How can that possibly be applicable to today's world? Well, I think it's the beautiful part about Sun Tzu really is, his work is that he actually tells you Right, of futility of war. I think that's the most important point that I must bring across to you. That is, you know, he actually says that war is bad. Right, so the first point is that we try and cooperate to do business. So we avoid, try and avoid war. So this important team has often ignored that, uh, you know, and, you know, you know Sun Tzu is a man who would say that, you know, take a city, yes, but don't murder, don't, don't slaughter. Take it, true strategy, true stratagem. You know what have what a takeover have done to the companies in the states, right? If it's if it's a false hostile takeover, for example, you know, I mean, all all this merger, you know, this uh, it, it does a lot of harm to the country in the first place, and secondly, it doesn't benefit the employees. Ah, oh, that's very interesting. So, so Sun Tzu, well, let's let's put it this way then, Doctor Fu. If Sun Tzu was looking at today's business world and he looked at the the way business was done, let's say in 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 the Western world, in America or Europe, and he looked at the way business was done in Southeast Asia, which would he have thought was the better model? But I think he would probably said that the, the, the Eastern way will be, a, will be a better model. Very clearly, because the Eastern way is more hum, harmonious approach, more a collaboration approach more of doing business with friends rather than doing business with competitors. Kelvin Pan, let me bring you in there. Do you, do you recognize um, what Dr. Fu is saying? Uh, that, that's your experience as well? Yes, right. In fact, I fully support his view on that. And basically because, firstly, I'm the military man. I'm, uh, you see, I have to go for two and a half years military training, and I'm the officer. And with, after that, I'm still going every year to serve the reserve and from that I can I pick up all of the army strategies and, and I, I can quote a quote a thing just now. I use it all the time is adapt to changes in the environment and that is a very key factor to survive. You you must be able to change in order to keep yourself ahead of your competitors. That is something, you know, I learned and it worked for my business. So, Dr. Fu, do you, do you think most businesses do indeed use strategy or do they just um, forget about it completely and not, not bother most on most occasions? Well, I think you just look at the uh, like Japanese, for example. The Japanese have uh, emphasized a lot on Musashi. And you read Musashi, and, and which is the book of five rings, and you find that Musashi wrote the book and he titled them Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, Emptiness. And Japanese companies will tell you that in competition, and that is a compulsory reading. They have to read the book to compete. And I think it is, you're right in saying that, look, these this are books of war. And I had the same reservations as, as you probably have in saying, look, that really is a prescription for generals in doing battles and doing wars. But remember, too, that the philosophy of war is in itself a paradox. That is, you, you, you are best prepared for war, right? 
in order to get peace. The idea is to have peace. And yet, at the same time, you must be prepared for war. So in business sense, it means to say that really, that we really want to collaborate. We really want to find a deal that we win-win. On the other hand, if, if there needs to be a severe competition, a price war, we will survive it. Because we are efficiently run, we are fit, we, are, we, we have the, inno the innovation, we have the ideas, we have the technology. And so that, that's the paradoxical aspect of it that is missing, I think, in the Western mind about, about strategy. Kelvin, c c are you able to give us any particular examples of how you would use Sun Tzu in, in running your business in Singapore? Can you think of an occasion when something that you've learned from Sun Tzu has dictated what you did in your business? They mentioned about focus your strength of your and your army to fight. You don't dis you know disintegrate your army strength. We have to you know, uh, put them together and focus on strength. And that's in business, same thing. You have to focus. Be focused then you can be, be better. Uh, can you give me your favorite, your favorite quotation from, from Sun Tzu? You must first thing know yourself. You must always study yourself, evaluate yourself before you go for the better. So if you can do that, every better you go, you win. And that's exactly in business. Then I like to use that all the time to remind myself, don't be rushed, you know, evaluate yourself, evaluate your enemy, your competitors and all this before you move forward. Using Sun Tzu's principles, if you're up against a, a formidable enemy, somebody who's dominating a market uh, in a particular place and you want to get into it, let's say Microsoft in the computer world, um, what do you do? There is no choice. You have to accommodate him. Win Windows really is sweeping the world. Now, on the other hand, right, there ought to be some anti-Microsoft strategy that could be worked out. Eventually, I mean, you know, the law of nature says that nothing remains strong forever. In the British Empire, good set, you know, I mean, I don't think Microsoft, you know, is, is unsaleable. But the only matter is that at the present moment, right, definitely there, is, there, are, there are gaps that are possible. So the sun may set even on Microsoft there, according to Dr. Fu Chek Tech. And I was also speaking to Singaporean businessman Kelvin Pun. So, according to those two, superiority for the East is emerging over the West in business because of superior strategy. Which, to some, might sound just a wee bit ironic, bearing in mind the present turmoil financial speculators, mostly from the West, are causing in their rather successful battles with many Southeast Asian governments. But, as we found out after we spoke to Dr. Fu and Mr. Pun, Sun Tzu's influence is by no means confined to executives in Japan or in East Asia. Some of the most successful strategists in the world's financial markets, it turns out, are also avid fans of Sun Tzu. We tracked down one of them, Jim Height, who runs an investment business from Colorado in the United States. One of the main precepts I think that is articulated is that the most successful general, if you will, is one who is able to accomplish his objective without committing his resources or troops to battle. That's the, sort of the ultimate um, success, and I think that one basic precept is overlooked by most people who study Sun Tzu and the Art of War. Well, on the face of it, there could, there could hardly, I would imagine, to a lot of listeners, be anything more removed from um, fight, you know, f fighting a war um, well, think, against, think against enemies. The application of that to business and portfolio management and risk management-related issues is clearly articulate what I want to accomplish with a portfolio or with a risk management situation and attempt to achieve that objective with the least amount of resources possible. Portfolio management and risk management at its heart is, without being overly dramatic, a war, and that is to say each individual par participant in each market is in effect at war with the other participants in that same market. And it's, each one of them are trying to gain an advantage, and that advantage is measured in whether you make money or lose money. For, a, let's say, an institutional client that has a sizable fixed income portfolio, their risk, for the most part, is to rising interest rates, and we can put all sorts of risk management strategies and portfolio management strategies in play, and we do a lot of scenario analysis to say what happens to us if interest rates go up, what happens to us if interest rates go down. We need to have tactics in place that enable us to mitigate the loss or the risk associated with the adverse movement in interest rates. So is it just a case, just a case really of good, solid planning? Is that, is that what Sun Tzu amounts to? 
wise, I think that's one of the most important precepts is planning and evaluating uh, as many alternatives as, as you can possibly manage and evaluate. But the, I think equally important is that regardless of how much planning and organizing you do, you need to recognize the reality that it is unlikely that actual events that transpire will conform exactly to your planning. And so therefore you have to incorporate a certain amount of flexibility that, that enable, in your planning that enables you to adapt tactically to what actually happens. I'm sure some other, again, people listening will say, well, you probably don't have to read Sun Tzu to do that. It sounds like good, solid common sense. There are a lot of people in business that follow um, and apply the basic principles and precepts that Sun Tzu articulated without ever having read Sun Tzu. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is you don't have to read Sun Tzu in the Art of War to basically apply some of the, the basic precepts, that is to say planning, the, the articulation of strategy, the inclusion of provision for flexible adaptation of your strategy. You don't have to read Sun Tzu to know that stuff. But I think the reading and studying of Sun Tzu sort of crystallizes uh, your understanding and application and ability to apply it. And and do you, do you still read the Art of War even yes, even I, after twenty years? I read it regularly. The the beauty of the work that was done, uh, it, it focused not on technology of the time. It focused not on fads of the time, but it focused on those things that are pretty much unchanging. And the things that are unchanging are human nature. And so he homed in on those elements of human nature that uh, basically remain unchanged regardless of the environment within which human beings find themselves. If uh, Sun Tzu was alive today, um, if he was in the financial markets, do you, do you think he'd be something of a whiz? Uh, yes, I, I'd have two two-part answer to that. I'd say yes, I think he would be more than something of a whiz. And secondly, uh, I would have a firm belief that very few people would know about him. The mysterious Sun Tzu, business guru extraordinary, and our disciple from the financial markets there was American risk manager Jim Height. And if you're interested in reading or finding out more about Sun Tzu, Dr. Fu's book is titled Reminiscences of an Ancient Strategist, and Jim Height's address on the internet is http colon backslash backslash www.strategies-tactics-com. Well, I hope you enjoyed the session. The photographs that you've seen were all taken while I was a visiting professor in the University of Umeå in Sweden. And I hope you learned something from the BBC interview that was recorded in 1997. Thank you.